Hey, how's it going, awesome humans? Josh Zaring here. Uh, this is my top five list from my experience doing videography, photography, and also multi-track recording, which is a big one for using a lot of data, needing a lot of high performance in your tower or even your laptop. Keep in mind, this is my opinion, but I am basing it off of years and years and years of experience. Um, there are some things that I've upgraded in the past where I did notice a huge difference. There are things that I've upgraded that I noticed almost no difference. Number one, solid state drive. Upgrading the solid state drive is like buying a new computer for a lot of machines. They are much faster to boot, they are much faster to load your programs, much faster at pretty much everything. Uh, you just don't want to store a whole lot of things on them. The easiest way to find out what capacity is the best for you if you don't have a lot of money and you want to go for the bare minimum is just to look at your OS drive and see what it's using currently. Uh, clear out your cache and everything and make sure that that's like what you need, but you still want to leave 50% extra. So don't cram everything on this drive and leave like four gigabytes left over of free space. You do not want to do that. It, it does affect performance even though it's an SSD. Now I upgraded my old bio laptop. Uh, it was one step away from just replacing it and now it's going on an extra year of life because I put an SSD in and for what I use my laptop for, it's plenty fast now. I didn't even upgrade the memory. I just upgraded the hard drive from your standard, standard mechanical to SSD and it made a world of difference. And I put a 512 in it and that seems to be pretty good for what I use it for. Number two, secondary storage drive. This is for internal. And this is where you wanna put all your photos, your audio files, your video files. And when you pull from a secondary drive that's not the OS, that doesn't have the OS or any programs or anything, it is so much faster. And this is more performance and more bang for your buck here because here, you don't want an SSD, you just want the, the biggest mechanical drive you can get, 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive with the spinning platters. I wanna throw in a 2.5 here for hard drives. Uh, I realize I'm hanging on the hard drive so I did not make this number three. If you throw in an external hard drive that's USB 3, 3C, or even Thunderbolt, that is your backup drive. And that can also be used between machines easily. You just unplug it and plug it into your other machine. It's great for backup. And I like to keep two to three copies of everything I'm doing at all times because of paranoia that I'm gonna lose what I'm working on or lose what I just finished or anything like that. I currently use a four terabyte uh, Western Digital MyBook and uh, two or three other external hard drives just in case. Number three, as much memory as you can get a uh, good guideline is a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM and all the way up to 64 and then from there on as much as your machine can handle it if you have the resources to get that much. Number four, a lot of people will put this right at the top of their list but if you already have uh, a more recent machine, you may already have this type of processor. So number four is processor and you wanna stick with an i5 or even better, an i7. I know the i9 is coming out. Just try to avoid anything marketed specifically for mobile, like laptops, stuff like that. Uh, avoid Celeron, anything that's not i5, i7, i9, or even more beefy than that. Just avoid that altogether. Now for photography, you can get away with using an i3 or like a lower end laptop or something like that. You will be waiting more for your edits. You're waiting more to load your photos, but what you can't use it for is video editing and audio recording uh, for like four tracks and up when you're mixing. It's not, it's not gonna handle it very well at all. So I would just stick with the i5, the i7 and up. Uh, if you think later on you're gonna move from photography to video, definitely just do that right, right, right away. Everything that I'm saying right now is based off my high end of performance, which is 4K video. I edit 4K uh, on my timeline, on a 1080 timeline. So basically what I'm saying is I'm basing this off of my machine, which handles 4K really well without using proxies. I don't use proxies at all. And that's when it makes a lower resolution copy of your video. And then when you render, it pulls in the, the high quality version. So one through four so far, that's what I'm basing it on. If you're uh, doing only photography and have no plans of doing anything further than that, uh, you, can, you can move down a little bit further in performance, move down a little bit more in cost. Number five, this was almost a, a top four, but I decided to throw the video card in there for certain people uh, and certain reasons. If you're a gamer, 
get the best video card you can. This is for content creation. So I'm gonna go with, don't get anything lower than a four gigabyte card. Uh, anything lower than that for, for even photography might not work out the best. Uh, but you don't have to get the highest end, the most latest bleeding edge technology here. The video card comes into play more importantly for video than photo and uh, not really at all for audio production. Uh, but anything is better than the integrated card. So anything is pretty much an upgrade from the embedded one on your motherboard. I've been through various different configurations throughout the years and the th performance increase I noticed the least is always the video card. And of course I get like a more recent one when I build a computer or when I upgrade a computer, but it, it doesn't make a huge difference for me. And that's based off of not just audio and photography, but 4K video timelines with multiple tracks and I'm color grading, I'm using lookup tables, lutes. So I am doing that without choking the machine. I actually have the options turned off in my video program, which is Magic Vegas Pro 15. Um, I have it unchecked because it rendered slower. It seemed to be more sluggish when it was trying to use the video card to do certain things. Now that's just my machine. I'm sure there's other machines that work better with it on, but this is just my experience and this is my opinion. So don't shoot the messenger here. So those are my top five biggest things that I upgrade personally from my machines. If you wanna reorder this list or just tell me that I'm wrong, go ahead and do that in the comments. I'm all up for suggestions. I'm trying to keep this video short and sweet. I'm gonna try and do some more of these top five, top three, uh, videos because there's a lot of opinions that I have related to content creation that I can I can easily rattle off this is what works and this is what doesn't uh, this is what works better this is where it doesn't work so good so if you have any suggestions for things that you want to see give me a comment give me a like if you like this video please subscribe and tell your friends keep creating and keep it awesome see you next time